Hi everyone, I'm Chloe. Welcome back to the Mentors Connect podcast. Today, pretty excited to be talking to Kate Quirk, who is the CEO of the ASX listed Alcidion Group Limited, who are a leading provider in software solutions for the healthcare sector. And today we're going to be diving in a bit into Kate Quirk's and her background, as well as mainly focusing on the impact of tech on the healthcare sector and how healthcare is looking in the future. So thank you, Kate, so much for meeting me today. Oh, pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. It's exciting. So yeah, tell us a bit about yourself. How did you find your way into healthcare now being the CEO of an ASX listed company? Well, yeah, it's an interesting story. I've, um, I did uh, at school, I was into science and maths. Um, so I was a bit unusual in some respects. I enjoyed that for a girl at that time. And we didn't get a huge amount of encouragement to say in STEM. Well, I went to an all girls school, so they did have some good STEM um, support. So, um, and I thought I might like to do medicine. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, but I wasn't quite the dedicated as dedicated a student as I probably needed to be to do medicine. Uh, so I found a degree called a Bachelor of Applied Science in Health Information Management, which I didn't know much about, to be honest, but it was health and it was um, information, it was science. And I thought, well, that sounded pretty interesting. So I, I sort of fell into this as a uh, career. And I worked in a hospital for a year or two um, where I was heavily looking after the paper medical records, but also um, implementing computer systems for Mm. hospitals. Um, And then a computer company reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to come and join them, um, uh, which I did because it was exciting. And they offered me a company car, which at that point was something that was really aspirational. Um, And so I've been 30 years in healthcare information technology, really, Um, mostly worked on the business side so I'm not a tech I'm not a coder I'm not a developer I don't know how to code software at all Um, but what I do know is what hospitals need software to do so I work on the business side so I understand how hospitals work and how to translate that into requirements for developers to develop Um, then I went into sales um, and then I found myself owning a company uh, and then that company, we sold to a listed company and they asked me to become the CEO of that. So, um, so here I am, uh, four, four years now, uh, CEO of a listed uh, ASX listed company. Well, that's an amazing journey. And, you know, definitely great to see, you know, how, especially now you're able to share that knowledge, which is exciting. So now I've got a few questions I've pre-prepared. And the first one being, undeniably, technology has rapidly developed in the past 10, 20 years. How has technology and this advancements impacted healthcare? Well, look, there's been amazing, um, obviously, technology advancements in healthcare in many settings. And obviously, I focus much more on the digital. Mm-hmm. Um, and interestingly, healthcare hasn't uptake, hasn't been as sort of um, aggressive with mm-hmm. their uptake of digital technology as they have new MRI screens and new transplant capabilities and so forth. Um, and that's partly, I think, just the, the way in which the um, the healthcare system runs. It's quite, at some points, doctors and nurses are a bit, you know, kind of reluctant to move from paper. Um, but in the last 10 years, we've seen that really shift as we've seen the junior, more junior doctors and nurses come through and say, well, hang on a minute, I use a telephone. I mean, I use a telephone for everything I do. The banking and everything. Why am I writing on paper when I go into my job in in, in the healthcare setting? So we've seen a lot of demand for that, um, and most paper now has been transferred into um, some form of computer system. Not all of them talk to each other as well as they should, um, and so certainly what my company does is actually try to make all of those systems talk together more easily to present one view of a patient's journey through the healthcare system. So in that sense, um, it's been exciting. But the last two years has seen a real acceleration from a digital health perspective. So the pandemic, um, whilst has been very challenging for healthcare, has also um, enabled us to really um, move very rapidly into using more computers and more devices um, to support healthcare delivery to the point that we're now monitoring people in their home so we can strap a device to their arm and actually find out what their blood pressure and their oxygen is which is important if you've got COVID and somebody's sitting in a hospital um, in a command center actually monitoring people at home not having to have them come into hospital all the time so that's pretty exciting in terms of you know a really big shift um, that that we've seen get 
get a real um, fire under it in the last couple of years. No, that's so cool. And I think, yeah, probably a good silver line, you know, in this situation that it's um, sped that process up. But now I want to continue on. How is El City on leading the way and, you know, software solutions changing and positively impacting the healthcare industry? Thanks. Look, I mean, what Elcidian is doing is really focused on data. So you might have heard or you might know that data is so important now. It drives so many things. I mean, obviously, anyone using social media knows that data is used to, 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 to take you in certain directions and down rabbit holes you never thought oh. you would go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but data in healthcare is, is really important too because we, uh, we need to start to bring it all together into a central area if we're going to improve healthcare delivery. So a lot of people might have heard that we've got a really big strain on the healthcare system at the moment because we don't have enough nurses and doctors to treat all the patients that we have and ambulances are getting ramped at, um, at, at hospitals, which means they can't get in patients into the ED. So more than ever, we've got this really big challenge about more people sick than we've got to treat people. So um, we're using data to try and help and speed up the decision-making process. So instead of doctors having to search for all the information across multiple test results and trying to find lots and lots of bits of paper, we're trying to bring that all together in um, to a single platform. And we push that information out on the doctor's mobile phone. And we actually start alerting them using that data to patients who might actually um, be at risk or patients that might be getting sicker that need to be um, dealt with more quickly than others. And even um, alerting them to patients that are in hospital but are ready to go home and are taking up a bed. And so uh, doctors can now be anywhere and get that alerted on their mobile phone, which is a really um, a really big step forward in terms of how we might make the healthcare system more efficient and ultimately safer. And it just makes sense, doesn't it? As you said, you know, everything's on our phones already. Why don't we transfer this type of way as well? But now I want to ask a bit. So, you know, um, I'll sit you on what are they focusing on and you as a group to continue to provide top-notch software looking 10, 20 years into the future? Yeah, look, I, mean, I think obviously we really focus on innovation. So um, one of the things that's important is to create an environment in your company, if you want to be innovative, where people can be creative, but at the same time, very safe in what they do. As you can imagine, we are a healthcare, we're delivering to healthcare. So we need to make sure that we have really strong processes in place about how we develop our software. But at the same time, allow people to have the capacity to come up with new ideas and, and things like pushing information out onto uh, mobile phones using AI and algorithms. And that's, I think, where we will see healthcare going. We're seeing that, obviously, in many industries. But artificial intelligence is what I mean by AI. And in healthcare, we call it augmented intelligence. Um, because we don't want to take away the doctor's decision making. So it's really important that doctors are engaging with their patients and that the art that they learn um, all through those many years as medical school that I avoided um, is in <laughs> fact able to be um, deployed uh, uh, in a way that is safe. And so what we do is we use technology to present them with things that they might have not thought about or might not have checked um, with this patient in that process. And it act, so it actually speeds things up, but it doesn't completely um, move away from their uh, decision making. Now, there are a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of stuff happening in our healthcare, which is true AI, and especially in the area of radiology and imaging. So, Imaging for breast cancer has been shown that we're much, much, we can be much more accurate when we use artificial intelligence or machines mm -hmm. to read the images that are taken during a mammogram um, than the human eye could ever be. So this is amazing technology. A lot of research is being shown um, how we're identifying much more early um, uh, diagnosis of breast cancer. Similarly, um, with other radiology exams, we're seeing countries that don't have a lot of radiologists in their country actually being able to take the film but have um, machines reading the film or doctors in a remote location actually assessing that and reporting on it. So, I mean, I, I don't think we'll ever get to a point where we don't have doctors. Um, I think what we will have, though, is the ability for them to be more efficient and to assist their decision-making process um, so it's more, it's quicker and, and it's more um, accurate. 
Well, that's pretty cool. And now before we finish up this podcast episode, Kate, I was hoping if you could share a piece of advice. You know, it sounds like you've had a pretty amazing journey. You got into healthcare, then you had your own company, and then you got, you know, bought out, and now you're working as the CEO of an ASX listed. So what advice would you give to a young listener listening now who's interested in leadership or healthcare? I always tell young people that I'm talking to to have confidence in themselves and believe in themselves and to stick to their path, um, no matter what any teacher or anyone in the playground or re- or I guess you don't say playgrounds when you're teenagers, but, you know, in the, in the school grounds tells you. Um, is It is really about your own confidence and belief in yourself that will you will have lots of times during your life when you will question what you're doing or somebody else will say you can't do it. Um, but look, listen to yourself, look inside yourself, follow your own instinct um, and have confidence uh, in your own direction that you're taking because you're your best advocate, you're your best supporter. Um, and uh, as, if you believe, then you can actually make it happen. Well, thank you so much, Kate, for that great piece of advice and for talking with us today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much for the opportunity.